Arthel, as the war in Ukraine rages on, there is another move now by world leaders to try and stop it. But do you think Vladimir Putin will actually listen? This is the fighting rages on. Vice President Joe Biden pushing back with some tough talk of his own. This amid the worst crisis in U.S.-Russian relations since the Cold War. We must judge the existing agreement meant and any future agreement with Russia by the actions Russia takes on the ground, not by the paper they sign. Too many times President Putin has promised peace and delivered tanks. Well, Vice President Joe Biden telling Vladimir Putin, quote, don't tell us, show us. That after the Russian president told a conference packed with world leaders in Munich that Russia, he says, does not want war in Ukraine. Well, now he must prove that to the skeptics. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko made an impassioned plea as he met with Secretary of State John Kerry and Vice President Biden, and he asked the world to witness what is going on in his country. We make a lots of press conference demonstrating to the whole world of the Russian soldiers and officers which lost his way 100 kilometers from the border. Poroshenko there holding up passports from Russians who, as he said, lost their way. What a way to lose their way. Sadly, this way is fighting is continuing on the Russian-Ukraine border today. And the growing conflict has reportedly claimed the lives of five more Ukrainian servicemen and wounded another 26 just in the past few days and shows no signs of ending. Mark Dubowitz is executive director of the Foundations of, for the Defense of Democracies and joins us now. Mark, you know, per, you got to hand it to Poroshenko. That was a vivid display of what some considered the lies coming out of Moscow when he held up all those passports of what he said were Russians uh, who were fighting against those in his country. But the big wider question is... Do you think Putin can really be stopped? Eric, I, I don't think Putin can be stopped unless the President of the United States makes it very clear that the United States has red lines and that we're going to enforce those red lines against Vladimir Putin, against Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, against Syria's President Bashar Assad. I mean, unfortunately, we sent the opposite message. We have no red lines and these uh, dictators essentially have our number. Well, he did send the red line on the chemical weapons to uh, Assad. and. You know, we saw what happened there. They do say that the Assyrian chemical weapons have been uh, most removed from that country. But you're saying there isn't a real message there. Well, actually, Eric, you know, unfortunately what's happened is that the Assad regime removed some chemical weapons, particularly the sarin gas, and has replaced it with the use of chlorine gas, and it's still killing uh, thousands of Syrians with it. So the Assad played us. Khamenei is playing us on the Iranian nuclear file, and Putin continues to play us by pushing deeper and deeper into Ukraine with, uh, with military personnel from Russia, offensive weapons, and pro-Russian Ukrainian uh, separatists who are really digging deeper and deeper into, into that country. Well, should we also, they want uh, weapons, more defensive weapons. Do you think we should send that, them weapons uh, to Kiev, or will that only inflame Putin even more? I think absolutely. I mean, I think we also have to arm our diplomacy and increase our negotiating leverage. And I think the defensive weapons are talking about, like, anti-tank missiles and reconnaissance drones, uh, armored Humvees, and, and most importantly, radar for detecting the, uh, the presence of rocket fire or artillery fire. All of that is our defensive weapons that will help Ukrainian military personnel uh, save their lives. But so why haven't, we, why haven't we done killed. that so far? I mean, they're being slaughtered. So why haven't we done that so far? It's been months and months and months. You know, we've seen these pro-Russian separatists uh, invade another country in Europe. Really, the first time that's happened since World War II. And Munich? I mean, please, this conference they're having this weekend is in Munich. Remember 1938 and the Munich Agreement? I mean, there are parallels and echoes of, uh, of, of the Nazis and Hitler and Czechoslovakia with what's going on, with, 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 with what Putin apparently is doing in Ukraine. Well, exactly, Eric. I mean, those are, those are lessons that we should have learned and haven't learned. I mean, the reality is that this White House has refused to actually not only use military force, not only threaten credibly military force, but has refused to actually arm people who are willing to fight for themselves. And not only Ukrainians, but moderate Syrians and millions of Iranians who are on the streets in 2009 yelling death to the dictator, President Obama, are you with us or are you with the dictator? The White House unfortunately doesn't want to arm its diplomacy. It, it believes in sanctions and engagement and diplomacy and more sanctions, but it's always loath to even contemplate military force 
even the hypothetical, even in, in providing military support to people who want to fight for their own freedom. Well, some would say that that's a wise thing, that he's not spilling more American blood. He has said that the war on terror is over, and he's keeping us out of another war. No, listen, there's, there, there's no reason I have boots on the ground in any of these conflicts. What I'm suggesting is you've got to arm people who are willing to fight for themselves. I mean, again, that was also the lesson of World War II. You know, there were partisans, brave partisans, willing to fight the Nazis. And the point is to arm people willing to fight dictators. It doesn't have to be American boys and, and, uh, and girls who are over there. It has to be Ukrainians and Syrians and Iranians and others who are willing to fight these brutal dictators. But if we're not even willing to provide defensive weapons to these people so that they can protect their own lives and their own country, then we are never going to have the negotiating leverage we need to resolve these conflicts peacefully and on advantageous terms. Finally, Mark, uh, in effect, have uh, we left them out to, hang to, out to hang to dry? I think that's exactly what we're doing. We're hanging all these people out to dry. And, and you know, again, we are the United States of America. We are a superpower. And we have a responsibility to protect people around the world, to help them defend themselves. And if we don't, then Putin and Khamenei and Assad and others are going to roll us. They're going to roll us in every negotiation. And we're going to end up not only diminishing the security of others, but diminishing American national security and credibility at the same time. All right. Well, Merkel will be at the White House on Monday, and we'll see how this will continue to play out. Uh, Mark Dubowitz of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, thank you so much for joining us, as always. Thanks for having me, Eric. Right. Mark Bell?